Anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the basics of waves. This is the first video that you need to watch uh, to understand how waves work uh, and everything you need for your IGCSE. Uh, so, by the end of this video, you should understand the key uh, terms that we associate with waves, um, particularly how to label a wave um, and how to use this thing called the wave equation. You should also be able to define what a wave is um, and identify different types of waves. We'll make it clear what we mean as we go on. So, very simply, a wave is anything that we get that transfers energy. So right now, I'm transferring energy from my mouth via the computer to your ears. The energy is sound energy. And that's going via a wave. Um, but we know there are lots of other ways of transferring energy. For instance, if I was to throw this pen at you um, and you could catch it, then you'd be getting kinetic energy from it. So a wave is slightly different. A wave is a way of transferring energy without matter or without transferring matter. So what does that mean? Well, this is a slinky, and a slinky is the classic way that physics teachers like to show how a wave works. On my slinky, I'm going to send energy from my hand here. So I'm moving my hand up and down, and you can see that this hand over here is shaking. Yeah, if this hand goes up and down, I feel the energy in this hand. So I've transferred energy from one place over here, and I've got my energy over here. Now, the actual matter, the coils that make up the slinky, haven't gone anywhere. I'm still holding on to this end of the slinky, and I'm receiving it at this end of the slinky. So energy has gone from one place to another, but it's done that without actually transferring physical matter from one place to something else. And all the waves will fit that definition. Now, this is a classic wave shape that you've probably seen lots of times before. Um, and I'm going to say it's going in this direction. Now, the direction of travel um, often has another word that we give it. And we call it the direction of propagation. And propagation is a fancy way of saying the direction that the wave is going in. So, uh, we have this line across the middle. And that's the way that the wave would be if there was no energy being transferred. So you can think of it as just this line that my slinky is lying in. The amplitude here, which we usually give the symbol A to, that's the physical distance that the wave moves, the maximum distance that we see it moving. But rather than using the word distance, I'm going to use the word displacement. If you remember back to when we did vectors, displacement is distance in a direction. So in a wave, we have displacement away from uh, the relaxed point, the zero point. We then have this distance here that we've marked as a wavelength. Now, wavelengths use a, well, we use a Greek letter called lambda to represent. Um, that letter I've just drawn there is lambda. You might see it drawn a bit more fancy, but when you're writing by hand, you call it that. So this is called a lambda. And the idea of a wavelength is it is any two identical points. So I've got a wavelength between this point and this point. This point and this point is also a wavelength lambda, and so with this point and this point. So any two identical parts of the wave, that counts as one wavelength. We also often call the peaks of a wave crests, and we call the bottom of waves troughs. So that's the basic ideas of what we label a wave. And one of the things that we'll do in our lesson is label a blank wave. Second thing we need to get the idea of is what is a wave front. So a wave front is a surface containing points affected in the same way by a wave at a given time. 
So what does that mean? Well, here is a wave. So I'm just going to draw in the direction of propagation again. And these waves are going through a slit. Now, when you do refraction, you're going to be really familiar with diagrams like this. But for now, what we're interested in is the idea of wave fronts. So each of these lines here represents a wave front. So those are all points with the same wave. So classically, this is a water wave. They might all be peaks at the top of my water wave. The next thing you need to know is that there are two basic types of waves, transverse and longitudinal. So here's my wave, and to make it, or my, my medium is going to send my wave, and to make it a little bit uh, easier for you, I am going to stick a little flag on my wave. So it's going to be a very simple flag, it's going to use a bit of paper, and I'm going to stick some paper to one of the loops of my wave, like this. So now you can see, pretty clearly, a midpoint in my wave. Right? Now there are two different ways that we can transfer energy to the wave. first one is a longitudinal wave, and that's doing this. Okay, that's a pretty simple longitudinal wave. Now I'm doing a really exaggerated version here, but you can see that with a longitudinal wave, the white label was moving that way. The other way we can send energy with a wave is like this. I can make my wave go up and down, and again, I get energy traveling along. So, the idea is that with a transverse wave, the actual motion of the particle is kind of up and down, and with a uh, longitudinal wave, the motion of the particle is side to side, but we can't call it that. So, we need a formal definition. And the formal definition is that for a transverse wave, it's when the particles carrying the wave uh, move perpendicular to the direction of propagation. But if you think about this, if my wave is propagating or moving from left to right, then for a transverse wave, they're going to go up and down. Because if the direction of propagation is that way, we can see I've got a 90 degree angle for the direction of the actual particle moving. So it's moving perpendicular. For longitudinal waves, the particles carrying the wave move along the direction of propagation, or parallel to the direction of propagation. You're going to need, again, those key definitions, and you're going to need diagrams for that. Um, occasionally, they might ask you for a uh, longitudinal wave, some key terms. So we have, in a longitudinal wave, compressions and rarefactions. So in a compression, that is where the distance between two particles gets smaller. In a rarefaction, that's where the distance between two particles gets bigger. And what happens is the point of the rarefaction moves along that way, and the points of compression move along that way, but the actual particles themselves, these loops, kind of stay in the same place. They just move a little bit. Sometimes they move close together, then they move further apart. Okay, so now we're going to get into a little bit of maths. So, here's my wave. I'm going to draw a pair of axes for my wave, and I'm going to draw a wave along it. Now, I already said from earlier that I call two identical, or the distance between two identical points on my wave, the wavelength. So in this case, that would be one wavelength. Now, there we can use this really useful equation here, which I put in a triangle, which is called the wave equation. And the wave equation says that the speed of a wave, which I'm going to call V, is equal to a wave's frequency, times its wavelength. So what does that mean? V is the speed of propagation. It is how quickly it takes the wave. If I start sending energy at this end, 
how quickly will it reach this end? It's the speed between you doing something over here and it being received over here. Lambda, as you know, is the wavelength. And then we have this idea of f. So what is f? f is the frequency of the wave. And what does that mean? It means how many waves per second, or how many complete waves pass a point per second. So a very slow wave might be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's about one hertz, about one wave traveling through every second. If I want to go a faster wave, I might go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's about two waves per second. So it's then pretty simple to say uh, that we can say that frequency is equal to one divided by this big letter T. And this big letter T is what we call the time period. What is the time period, you ask? Time period is the time taken for one complete wave to pass a point. So what you need to know are these two equations. Frequency is equal to 1 over the time period, and velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. Um, try and have a little go with that. I'll set you some uh, questions in the lesson for you to try, and there'll also be one at the end of this video. Let's see if you can plug some numbers in. Um, in fact, let's go straight into that. So the first question, let's do an example one together. Find the speed of a wave with a wavelength of 30 meters and a frequency of 120 hertz. Probably should have said hertz, that means waves per second. So this hz is a hertz. And it means waves per second. Okay, so what have we got here? I've got, if this again is my uh, graph for my wave, there's a wave. And I know that I have a wavelength of 30 meters. So from one point in the wave to the next point is 30 meters. Now, it's always a good idea whenever you're doing any physics problem to write down what you know. So, um, I know that the wavelength lambda is 30 meters. And I know that the frequency is 120 hertz. So using my equation, V is equal to F lambda, well, that's pretty simple, I can just substitute in my equations. So V is equal to 30 times 120, uh, which is 360. This is a velocity, so it should be in meters per second. Let's do question two. The speaker produces a sound at a frequency of 6.6 .6 kilohertz. There's my F, and that's 6.6 .6 kilohertz. Now, whenever we're doing anything with waves, it's really a good idea to simplify any uh, prefixes that we give you. So, kilo means times a thousand. So, I can say that that is 6.6 .6 times a thousand hertz. So that is 6,600 hertz. Now it says the wavelength of the sound is 5 centimetres. So lambda is 5 centimetres. Um, again, I don't want it in centimetres, so I will say that is 0 0.05 metres. So again, I'm going to use my V is F lambda. Oops. Let's clear that.
V is F lambda. So V is equal to 6,600 times 0 0.05, which your fashion to calculator comes out at 330 meters per second. So that's how you use the wave equation. Um, we'll have to say we'll have a go in the lesson. You're probably going to have some questions, probably going to be a few things that aren't clear about this, so please make a little list of things that you're not sure about uh, and speak to me during our lesson. I look forward to seeing you then.